The holidays are just around the corner, and even though I prefer to watch Die Hard or Gremlins, I can swallow my pride and feed something a bit more common. As a bonus, we're going to be doing a holiday-themed pun counter. So watch, pay attention, and listen as the Santa Claus films go missile toe-to-toe -to -toe on Movie Feuds. <laughs> Full disclosure, one of the Movie Feuds intern elves, Aaron, has put this script together for me. So if anything's factually inaccurate, you have only him to blame, because I refuse to look over this and do any research myself on my own show! Subscribe. In all three films, the man himself, Saint Nicholas, Chris Kringle, Big Red, the Sultan of Swat, the Colossus of Clout, the great Bambino Santa Claus is played by Tim Allen. Things weren't always this way. He started off as a divorced businessman and father, Scott Kelvin. Eric Lloyd takes the role of his son, Charlie. Kelvin's ex-wife is played by Wendy Crewson, and Judge Reinhold plays the boyfriend, Neil. There's no shortage of witty, family-appropriate humor between the main crew, and there's a good amount of chemistry. Even though some of the child actors are, well, child actors. That's intern Aaron's nice way of saying they suck at acting. Another favorite is David Krumholtz as Bernard the Head Elf, who absolutely slays as he delivers line after line of witty, nut-cracking jokes. It's a shame he wasn't able to return for the third outing. He must have had something in his contract. Perhaps there was an escape clause? We have fun here. The second installment introduces Elizabeth Mitchell as Carol, your dime a dozen hot school principal who is destined to become Mrs. Claus. An older Eric Lloyd returns as Charlie, as do the characters of Laura and Neil, although they're both pushed to the background, much like I was in our middle school production of A Christmas Carol. You know what? I played the shit out of poor person number two, and nobody can take that from me, especially my teacher, Mrs. Bramble. She was the worst. A real Grinch. We're introduced to Liliana Mummy as Lucy, Scott's stepdaughter. The movie also gives us the council of legendary figures who are also present in the sequel. Though they have relatively little screen time, it's interesting to note that the North Star himself, Michael Dorn, plays the Sandman. Why that's interesting is beyond me. Intern Aaron, you didn't put anything about it in the script, so I guess we're just gonna move on. All right. Santa Claus brings Martin Short along for the ride on the sleigh as Jack Frost in the third outing. This is the only movie in the series to have a real villain, since I wouldn't really consider the creepy robot Santa from the second one as much of an antagonist. While Jungle to Jungle stars Martin Short and Tim Allen play well off each other, it seems like Allen is less invested in his character this time around. He may still be Santa, but he lacks any real presence. Thank you. Not a lot of deep commentary in these movies. They're pretty on the red nose in this story department. The first one involves Scott Kelvin inadvertently becoming Santa Claus after his kid makes him put on the suit. This happens after the jolly fat man fell off the roof for a silent night. They are then whisked away to the North Pole. This is me whisking. What follows are a series of riveting custody battles as Laura and Neil try to stop Charlie from seeing his dad. We end just like every good Christmas should, with a SWAT team storming the house and killing everyone inside. No, that's not what happens. Oh, they just, okay, they just believe in Santa, I guess. The second is arguably the weakest of the three. Basically, Santa has to get married. Otherwise, he's gonna stop being a clinically obese, gray-haired man flying around in a sleigh in the middle of the night in the cold, harsh bitterness of the world, delivering presents to crappy, privileged children. What a terrible thing to have to give up. Also, Charlie ends up on the naughty list for reasons. Santa has to leave the North Pole to fix these issues. Because of poor management and a lack of communication, the elves put a robot Santa in charge. It seems like the most logical thing to do next. Long story Martin Short, they save Christmas. There's also reindeer fart jokes, so take that for what it's worth. It's worth its weight in coal for me. I didn't see the escape clause, so I was really excited to read what sort of masterpiece this turned out to be. According to intern Aaron, this third installment goes the tried and true Back to the Future 2 formula, an alternate timeline route that would later be abused by movies such as Shrek Forever After and Cinderella 3. Ho, 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 hold on, Aaron. Cinderella 3. Who saw Cinderella 3? What kind of a deep cut is that? Who's this for? What audience knows Cinderella? Let's get back on task. Scott is tricked by Jack Frost into meddling with the timeline. 
Jack then turns the North Pole into Walmart on Black Friday. Scott is forced to confront Jack with the help from Lucy in order to bring back the true meaning of Christmas or something. While it is better than the second, I guess, it's still missing that special something that makes the first one uh, scrumptious to many people. Well, scrumptious was the best word to use. <laughs> The soundtrack is your usual holiday fare with some whimsical elements thrown in for good measure. In other words, it's nothing like Frozen. The effects are what you'd expect from Disney at the time, nothing special here. That's honestly all Elf intern Aaron wrote for the effects and music section. That's it. That's the whole thing. So now I have to do what I didn't want to do and go out of my way on my show and do some actual work. I'm gonna keep it light, I always do. While the visuals have certainly aged, I still think they work in the context of the movie. Santa stretches, thins, and wobbles down chimneys. Seeing Tim Allen transform throughout the movie is really fun to watch. Evil Robot Claus is pretty humorous looking, so props to the makeup department. And Martin Short looks great as Frost. Composers shifted from Michael Convertino to George S. Clinton for the two sequels. Although they're hardly noticeable changes because as Aaron said before, it's all pretty standard fare. All right, let's wrap this up. Despite its flaws, the original is still a holiday classic. Out of the three, I think it's the only one that is actually enjoyable for both kids and adults and there's some humor and themes that speak to both. It's a shame the other two dumbed the message down. I can appreciate that they at least tried to do something different for the story in each, but that's just me. Your opinion is the one that counts. Comment and subscribe to Feud Nation if you believe in Santa. I'm joking, even if you don't, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. Uh, thanks to a YouTube glitch, my subscribers are dropping harder than my uncle after eight cups of eggnog. That's not really a pun, that's more of just a sad reference point. Strike that. Strike that from the counter. All right, thanks for watching, and remember, this is more than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Also, special shout out to Elf Aaron for helping me out with this episode. Uh, you are, of course, fired. Uh, make like a little drummer boy and march right the hell out of here. But, but, with your, but with your head up high, because this firing isn't out of uh, insult or hate, it's out of respect. Merry Christmas.